All right, here we go. Um, uh, if you're watching this, you have probably got a tree rat problem, uh, or squirrels as some people call them. Uh, make no mistake, uh, tree rats are, squirrels are tree rats. They're just, they're both rodents and uh, uh, they'll eat through anything and uh, one has sort of a fuzzy tail and, and climbs trees and people somehow think they're cute uh, but they're no different than a rat in a drain ditch. So uh, if you've got a problem with nests, or if you've got a problem with tree rats, um, you've got a nest nearby. And uh, so this is about how I figured out a way to take down rats nests that are way up high in trees. Um, and uh, just as a preamble clarification, I called uh, our town uh, bylaw people and it is legal to take down uh, a rat's nest on your own property uh, or on a friend's property if they want you to do it there. Uh, so it's A, it's legal. And then I also called the Humane Society and uh, they said uh, as long as you don't hurt an animal in the process, they're okay with it. So it's legally cool and uh, the Humane Society says it's okay. Um, you know, maybe check the laws in your town, but I think if it's a tree on your property, you can knock down a nest if you need to. So, the question is, how do you do it? Well, what I did was I came up with this idea, thought I'd share it with the world. Might as well, because it works. I've now taken down 14 of these things in our little area here. And uh, there's a, uh, there's like at least, well, there's actually two left, but there's one that's going to be relatively easy to get to and so I'm going to show you how to do that but first I need to show you how to build the tool so the first thing you do I went and bought these uh, four of these uh, um, PVC pipes they're about uh, two inches in diameter I believe uh, I'm up here in Canada these days they're like uh, seven dollars and twenty five cents a piece five bucks down in the US of A um, so you get like four of these bad boys but then, how do you put them together? Well, I figured out that too. So you get a piece of wood. One of these, I believe they're called like two by twos, but they're actually one and a half by one and a half. Um, and you get these guys, and then just shave down, you can knife or a shaver or something, and just trim down the corners of them so that they're, uh, so, so they'll just then fit into one of these said PVC pipes. And oh yeah, and don't take too much off. That's one thing you gotta be kind of careful. On this one I took off just a smidge more than maybe I should have. And so it's a bit loose in there and you don't want that. Um, but so you take one of these and then yep, obviously just take the other one and do that and put them. Now, these are separate because, as you'll see when I do the actual operation, you need to have them separate to add them as you go up the tree. But here's the two of them I can put together. So here's two I put together, and then the wood's in there, and then duct taped around it. So this guy is a solid two. Then I came up with, well, then the idea was, I did the first few, and uh, the problem was the, 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 the end, this part. And so, at first, I put on just a, uh, uh, an orange uh, juice thing, top, was uh, about the right size, so I gaffered that to the top. And then, uh, but then that was kind of smooth, and the plastic was just kind of, um, you know, pushing through and being all smooth. So then I came up with this thing where I uh, took the top of a, <laughs> uh, like a soup can, and then that's the top of a tuna can. And so that creates this kind of, you know, something that you could kind of push with. that's even bigger than the orange juice top. And I was using that, but then then I looked in the shed and I spotted this thing, which I'm sure you recognize. I believe they're called a uh, three-prong cultivator. Uh, and uh, this thing actually was kind of broken. So I thought, oh, that might just work because 
this is going to give you or does give you the punch when you're pushing up you've got this whole surface to push up with and then if you pull it down you can pull stuff down so this has turned out to be a great little addition and very solidly gaffer taped to the uh, side and that's the thing way up in the tree oh and then one last uh, tool you might want is uh, you have one of these uh, a lopper uh, these things are fantastic um, I bought it like for 50 bucks 10 years ago after one job and uh, ended up using it uh, it's the tool I've used outside of the house more than any other that I've that I own um, so in this oh and it's a Fiskars highly recommend that brand um, and uh, because you see what will happen is you'll be going up there trying to get to the get a straight line up to the rat's nest and there might be a branch in the way that prevents it so at least for 14 feet uh, you'll have this thing to be able to take them down with oh and one other funny thing so a lopper by Fiskars is my uh, recommendation they're pretty cheap and you'll be surprised how much you actually end up using it I take down dead branches with it I've taken down you know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them here in our little area over the last 10 years and did it so much that the the blade comes with a blade that can optionally screw on whenever you need a blade to reach a little further and uh, it got a smidge uh, what do you call it, dull and uh, so I looked on the box about ordering a new blade and lo and behold it says a lifetime guarantee so where do you get that in life anymore um, so that's your Fiskars uh, lopper which I say gives you 14 feet on the lopper plus your hands plus that's another foot so you can reach pretty high up if you need to remove anything and like I say you can clean up if you've got a rat tree rat problem you got trees and if you got trees you got dead branches and these take off you can take down all the dead branches you know below 15 plus 5 20 feet uh, and uh, really cleans up your trees. They look so much nicer when you get the dead wood out and it's just the healthy branches and leaves. So I'm really big on whoppers. Um, so I think that's it for the tools. Uh, so, you know, your hardware store for four PVC pipes, maybe you find one of these things in your shed or you pick one up or something, but boy, they sure work for the end part. And, uh, and then these little pieces of wood you stick in to make it stick together. So I hope that was clear. And uh, now we're gonna, oh, and by the way, I also wanna say, uh, since I've started taking these uh, rat's nests down in our little area here, we've had problems with, uh, oh, they chewed up, uh, they killed the morning dove eggs. They went and ate the morning doves that were, had nested on my belt, on my uh, windowsill. Um, they started eating into my windowsill like it was food, so my windowsill's all chewed up from these tree rats. Um, they climb up on people's balconies and go into their um, the little flower bed planters that they've got up there and dig up their flowers. Um, they've been eating into the fences. Uh, they've been digging up the gardens. But I mean, if you're watching this, you probably know you got a you know squirrel slash tree rat problem, or you wouldn't be watching this. So, but anyway, once I took down all these nests. You hardly see them anywhere around anymore. They've moved on to the next development somewhere. So, uh, you know, it works. That's the point. So, okay, so we'll wrap. This is the opening part where we go over the tools. And then in the next segment, we'll go over uh, how to actually send it up the tree and pull the nest down. So, hope you're enjoying so far, and uh, soon we'll do the uh, next part of the mission. All right, peace out and enjoy nature and. Uh, it would make it all work for all of us. Oh yeah, <clears throat> one other thing I forgot. Um, people often ask, um, how do you know, aren't they in there when you go to knock them down? Uh, I, I, I've taken down 14 and there's never been one home yet. So, there's that. Um, during the daytime, <clears throat> I guess they sleep in them at night, I don't know. But, uh, and the thing you can do is you just the first time you get up to it you poke it once and if somebody's in there they're going to scamper out uh, but again I've taken down 14 of these and uh, that's never happened once um, you always give it the first poke and if there was something there it would move um, 
and then the question is about nesting um, and could there be babies in there or something. Um, there was one here and you could tell uh, if they and so I waited, uh, you can tell if they're nesting and they apparently they uh, have babies uh, generally speaking in the A months, April and August, you remember that. Um, so it might not be the best time to take them down then, but you can tell because there will be one of them, the mother I assume, um, hanging out right by that nest. And so that's what I observed with one of them, you know, this one, there was one tree rat hanging right next to the rat's nest. And so I didn't go for that one. We waited a, a while and uh, a couple months later or something. And, you know, then you go, you poke, and whatever baby was in there is now flown the coop. And, uh, and you could take it down. So if you don't, so whatever rat's nest problem you've got, if you don't see one sort of lingering or sleeping or hanging or sitting right next to the nest, it probably doesn't have any babies in it. So that's the way you can tell with that. <clears throat> like I say, the first poke will, t you know, if there anybody in there, they're gonna scamper away. Uh, but again, I've taken down 14 nests and that's never happened once. So that just hopefully answers that little question right there. Okay, cheers. Good luck denesting. Okay, so here we are at uh, the actual nest takedown. Uh, and uh, so here is the tool ready to go into action with your three-pronged uh, cultivator taped on to the end. And uh, you're uh, 16 feet. Each of these pipes are eight feet long at your PVC pipes at your local hardware store. Put them together, we got 16 feet. Now, so here's today's nest. Uh, so, you get her standing up tall like that, get started, and as you can see, this is higher than uh, 16 feet. So this is where we get into the uh, putting the pieces together. And uh, so again, as you learned in the last bit, here's the wooden thing that goes in at the end and uh, these get put into the end of the PVC pipe to give you some, oh look, this is something we'll talk about maybe in a later part, but this stuff, this is rats chewing these branches off the trees. And when you start to see these in your yard, you know there's probably a rat building a nest someplace in a tree nearby. So that's what those things are. And I cue you to look up. Now, this nest here is uh, uh, kind of unique in the 16 that I've cut down so far, or taken down, knocked down, in that uh, this is an old nest up there that uh, they, uh, it is, they've been putting in some renovations recently. So, because there's green branches up there. You don't usually see that. Um, so, all right, now here's the tricky part. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. All righty. Okay. Now, give it some nudges. Earlier today, I was taking down another one, and uh, for the very first time, a, a, a rat scampered out of it. I've taken down, this will be the 17th nest, and I've taken down, and uh, never been a rat up in one yet, but. Uh, there was today, kind of weird. So I've jiggled it there. If there was anybody in there, they would have scampered out. And so we start pushing. And the great thing is, with that the three-pronged cultivator at the end, it both pushes and it gives you something to pull with. So we can kind of pull it, pull pieces, and push pieces. Oh, and another fun little trick is you can kind of spin it, and that kind of uh, take, you know, knocks a bunch of it down too. So, there we go. Good.
Oh, there's a good twist. That's the twisting action. Pretty much one down the There we go. How's it looking, Ken? Oh, that's pretty clean. Okay, I like clean. That's another thing is to uh, like I like to take it all down so that uh, if you leave a little bit of a remnant, they might come back and go, oh, we can rebuild. So that's an important thing. Um, uh, so you really got a good sense there if you saw it of. Uh, how the uh, the three pronged cultivator really digs in and then also can pull back and then like I say the twisting action once you get up there to the height of the nest just spin the thing around and those three teeth you know prongs twist and knock down everything in its path or that's up there uh, so and again this was a three pronger three three polar um, I, I've now started monitoring um, whether it's a two pole or three pole and the four poles are really tricky and perhaps in an upcoming episode or section we'll do a four pole takedown which are really something uh, you really get up there but then what you want to do is just knock the rest of this crap down okay I think we're pretty clean right and uh, uh, let's get that last one and then I'll just I want to just show you the clean up because that's you want to open the woods somewhere. Uh, no, oh, that was a lot. Well, here where I live, we have, uh, you can do the, uh, the blue recycle bins, your normal blue recycle bin like they have everywhere. Well, where I live, you can get stickers to put on. So if you put it out this way, they know it's got yard waste. And if you put it out this way, it's like paper and tin and stuff. So. There you go. So you take this, and I prefer to use gloves for this part because God knows what those rats are up to. And uh, so you just do this, and you can see how there's got tons of new stuff. And we're just trying to start a, a put on a, uh, a, a bedroom extension or something. Uh, but we put an end to that. And these poor people, my neighbor here, these rats have been climbing on their balcony there and, and eating into their. Uh, beautiful little plants in their planters so um, this is this is the problem but if you're watching this video you've already got a tree rat problem you don't need me explaining it to you so there's the first one we might do a couple more uh, to add to this uh, make it a I think we'll go full feature like movie on this taking down rats nests one two three so there you go that's this part of this episode thanks to my cinematographer friend Ansel Adams and uh, we'll see you at the next tree well, here we are at the second location to, for today. Um, and what's interesting and different about this is, uh, as I mentioned briefly before, um, you will sometimes, a key is if you start seeing branches like this filling <clears throat> all over your lawn underneath your trees, this is one more problem about tree rats is they, uh, you know, is they eat the branches. They just destroy the trees and they don't care. And so, but if you start to see these things, uh, then you ought to start looking in your trees for a rat's nest. Um, so, oh, and the other thing about this one is, uh, which probably is, um, I, I've now taken down, well, I guess that was 17. Um, two of them they have rebuilt. Uh, so less than one in 10, but occasionally they will come back to the same location and try to build again because of uh, because it was a place that worked for them. Now, the thing is about the branches is that they usually need to have, say, at least three branches or something for them to put the uh, the nest in. And we had the, a rebuild down the street there. And um, so I took that down. But then more importantly, I used my lopper, which we also talked about in the last opening episode, um, to take down at least one of those three branches in the location if, if your lopper can reach it because they need the th they need the three so if you've got a place where they come back and if it's within reach of your lopper take down uh, at least one or more of the branches that, that are at the crux of the nest uh, so that they can't just go back and build in that same perfect location so and that's what we've got here is a brand new rebuild and I didn't, wouldn't have noticed it except for all of the uh, 
branches on the ground. Um, so let's see. I think this is. Yeah, this is going to be. Well, I don't know. I think this is a, in between a two branch and a three branch. I mean, a two, two pole and a three pole. But it looks like I'm kind of getting it here. Oh man, that's huge and thick already. Cheapest creepers. And I'll tell you, the uh, the three the three frogs cultivator I take on up there sure turned out to be a good part of this invention because as you can see, it gives you a punch so you can punch and then a uh, a pull. To, you know. You can also pull at it. Oh. Gee, this was a huge one. Oh.
Alright, so you get the idea. So, here we go. Look at all this crap that came down, eh? Sheesh. That was a hard one. Really big. So that was uh, obviously a brand new one. This is where we had cleared them out before. And we noticed all the you know, nibbled off branches that were eaten into the tree anyway. And cue to look up. And you saw the size of that thing. It was about three basketballs. So, that's the way you do it. It's usually not quite that difficult, but it was only a two-polar, that was handy. Um, so, there's two in one day, and uh, maybe we'll do some more, uh, maybe do a four-polar to give you an idea of how that operation works. So we did a two and a three today, and uh, here's to successful tree rat removal wherever you are on the planet. Okay, so here we are at the next step in the process. I reckon this is going to be a three-polar, but you never really know until you do it. Um, and uh, this one is uh, different. Well, they're always all different, but this one is in a birch tree, so that's uh, a little different. Uh, and it's also a fairly new nest, um, and this will be the 20th one I've taken down. Um, and uh, just one other thing, when I came over here just now, sure enough, I found more of these things. And uh, the indicators that uh, if you see pieces of branches, broken off from your tree in your yard about this size look up above and you probably got a rat's nest so it's kind of funny that here they are again so now we're going to start the tricky part uh, so okay Good. In tight. Oh, this is almost going to be a four polar. Jesus. Oh, I forgot one of the tools I was going to recommend, which is goggles. <laughs> Sometimes you need those. All right, this is. And I'm going to try the twisting action I've explained before. Get it up so that that three ring, three prong cultivator is right into the nest, and then turn the pole. And that seems to do a lot of damage. first episode I showed you one of these wooden things that I trimmed a little bit too much so I just put one strip of duct tape on either side and that uh, made the, the whatever you call this thing this post just a little bit thicker for it to fit in there um, I can't believe how hard this is up there should be that hard Good twist. Oh, that's a good 
the branches, or the bark, I mean, from the tree in my backyard. I've seen them peeling the stuff off. That's where it's been going. How's that look? It looks pretty clean from here. Oh, these things are getting hard. off my beautiful tree in the backyard that I see them out there stripping the bark off the tree and that's where it's ending up so one more destructive thing they do oh look they had a freaking uh, pandemic mask up there look at that all the crap they pick up to put in their nest there's a freaking uh, pandemic mask. So, that was harder than it usually is, but maybe that's a good one to have on video. But there you get the idea. A lot of pokes, and this was the time we had to uh, do the deep twist, was how that one really came down, was you get the, the three prongs right up into the nest, and then twist it. Uh, and that's how we do it. So we may go and try a four, Polar. This was almost a four polar. Well, we may go and try a four polar now. Uh, but anyway, this has been quite the adventure. I hope you're enjoying it so far. All right, here we are at a, an interesting alternative. Uh, my neighbor pointed out a new nest has just been built by her window, and uh, it's right here above her beautiful patio terrace thing and they've been tearing up the garden and eating into the furniture and it's a nightmare. So uh, we're going to take a shot at this. It looks like a three-polar to me. Um, it's going to be a high three-polar. Uh, maybe this will be the climactic uh, takedown of the little video movie, a squirrel nest removal movie. And uh, so I hope you've enjoyed it so far and uh, here goes to uh, takedown four. Just the 21st nest I've taken down around here, can you believe it? All right, here we go. Well, that's a three polar for sure. Okay. Go to the nest. Here we come.
Again, using the twisting action here, very effective. You get the, the little three-prong cultivator up into there, and then twist. And that really loosens things up and breaks it away. Geez, the three we've taken, three of the four we've taken down on film have been three of the hardest of the 21 I've ever taken down. I don't know what the heck the luck is on that draw. But uh, so hopefully from these little examples you can see both how the tool was made, how you put it together, how you kind of snake it up the tree, how you give it a poke to make sure nothing's in there, and then begin the pushing and pulling and also twisting if you can tell when you get the prongs right at the nest level and then you spin the thing around um, that's one of the most effective ways to break it up and then once it's broken up a lot of just sort of poking of the branches will just jiggle it loose so i hope uh, you've enjoyed this little feature film on how to get rid of gnat rats nests in all different kinds of trees in all different kinds of situations so if you like this, oh yeah, what I said, click like and subscribe, as Jimmy Kimmel and everybody says. Come back, check out the other channels and the other videos, and uh, good luck de-rat nesting your property. It's legal, the Humane Society says it's A-OK, -okay, and uh, get the rats to move on and leave our little paradises alone. So this is Brian signing out from Rat Denesting Central. And we'll see you next time.